my friends and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show for April 22nd. My name is Shelly Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and I want to welcome you back if you've been here before and welcome you anew if you're brand new. So today we're going to go over a little bit of what's going on in the chart for the current planets, and then we're going to go over a chart that I wanted to do because it's kind of a combination chart of two celebrities, one I follow and one my daughter follows. And I thought it would be an interesting combination um, given the current circumstances. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But first, we're going to go over the now chart. Just to update you real quick, yes, I am still sick a little bit. I am still dealing with a bronchial infection, but I'm taking echinacea and it's doing a good job for me. I'm not a doctor. I recommend it as a lifelong herbalist, but I'm not a doctor, but it is helping. I got some better brand of it. It's not even a brand. It's just um, an herbal store. So it's helping my, my uh, congestion and the infection is subsiding now. So I'm very thankful for that. That being said, there may be a few edits to coughing, but Anyway, this week, a lot better than last week. Okay, so looking at what's going on astrologically, I've got my ephemeris here, and it doesn't look like there are a lot of shifts and changes that are of note this week, which quite honestly is a blessing, if I do say so myself. As you can tell, I have not had an easy time of it, but also technologically, I've been getting a lot of glitches, um, a lot of tech anomalies in my day-to-day -day life. And I want to know if you've been getting those. Let me know in the comments below what kind of things you've been experiencing. But um, yeah, it's not been an easy one for me. Earth energy, you know. Okay, so today is Saturday and the moon entered Gemini at 6.11 a.m. Eastern. There are a couple aspects today, both moon aspects. One, one is a trine to Pluto and Aquarius, and that happened right after the moon went into Gemini, because Aquarius is also in an air sign. Pluto is also in an air sign. And then uh, later this afternoon at three o'clock Eastern and noon Pacific, the moon squares Saturn in Pisces. So those two aspects, well, three the moon in Gemini is going to bring out the duality of the storyline again. We've already had Mars in Gemini and now Venus in Gemini. And the moon goes into Gemini this month for a couple days through Monday. And that means that we're going to revisit how the duality of our desire is shifting with regard to home and security. What do we feel about having duality between two partners? to people, to females, uh, moon in Gemini is mother and women. And then uh, Venus in Gemini is also women, sisters, um, friends, that kind of thing. Moon in Gemini can be mothers and older women or nurturing females. And then uh, the sextile to Pluto is going to bring out uh, a potential change of energy, a major shift in energy because Pluto does have that energy about it. It's a major shift psychologically and um, having it in aspect to the moon, which is home and hearth. So there could be a large shift and change of energy surrounding home, surrounding mothers, surrounding uh, the el older female nurturing energy. And then finally on Saturday is a square between Mercury and Saturn. Saturn is in the sign of Pisces asking us to become more responsible for our emotional nature, for our desires and our dreams and visions. Saturn in Pisces asks us to be more responsible for our vision and for our dreams. Also, wherever we may be more addictive, escapist, or codependent. So those are the themes of Pisces. It can be taking ownership for your career or art, artistic nature, photography, genealogy, um, any of these things could come up while the time of Saturn is in Pisces. The square of the moon to Saturn is going to be a responsibility for that, any of those themes of codependence, addiction, drugs, alcohol, escapism, etc. 
So that is kind of a theme for Saturday. And of course, it's a quick transit since it's the moon. And that means that you may not even notice it unless, unless those are the themes that you're dealing with personally. Sunday, we have the moon joining up with Venus at 8.43 in the morning. Moon is sextile to Chiron and Aries in the middle of the afternoon. And Mercury sextile to Mars in Cancer at 11.19 p.m. So the energy of the moon and Venus joining up, again, it's really strong around what is the storyline for the dual nature of desire, the dual nature of love, of femininity, of beauty, of aesthetics and attraction. Then we have moon uh, sextile to Chiron. It's going to be a storyline around uh, sexual drive, believe it or not, sex drive in Gemini. Moon is more aware of the sexual side of their nature and flirtation, communication, friendship, social activity. And then Aries Chiron is about the masculine energy, the masculine drive, and a potential wounding around that or a storyline that emphasizes Aries Mars energy, which is, uh, you know, male drive, male aggression, male assertion. Um, Mercury sextile Mars in Cancer, and that happens at 11, 19 p.m. So it's about nine hours, after, nine or 10 hours after the uh, Chiron energy but Mars is in Cancer. And so of course, Chiron is answering to Cancer being that its ruler is Aries right now. And Mercury sextile Mars in Cancer means that, or excuse me, Mercury in Taurus sextile Mars in Cancer is a more cooperative energy. And so Taurus and Cancer get along because they are both engaged with desire, engaged with um, connectivity and responsibility and security. So they kind of accent the overlapping themes of romance or creativity or children, family, home, um, connectivity. Monday, we have moon in Gemini in the morning, sextile Jupiter in Aries. Uh, and so that's going to be, again, more of a shift and change energy coming in, especially socially or potentially romantically still. And then the moon squares Neptune in Pisces. A square of moon to Neptune is going to highlight a deeper desire and a vision for what you want your life to look like. And then the moon enters Cancer at 2.58 p.m. Eastern, 11.58 a.m. Pacific, and immediately in conjuncts to Pluto. And then sextiles overnight to the sun in Taurus and trines Saturn also overnight. It's late in the evening in Pacific time, 9.11 p.m. and 9.40 p.m. And then early in the morning, uh, 12, 11 a.m. Eastern and 12.40 a.m. Pacific respectively. So the moon sextile sun is, you know, ego and the connectivity, the communication between desire and home and family and the structure of the home and family and the finances. So sun in Taurus is going to highlight the financial aspect and what we think of our personal life and does it have value in the world. Uh, the trine between moon and Saturn overnight is going to be a more moody, emotional, sentimental energy and definitely one where we may want to just hole up in the house and not really deal with people overnight. Um, I'm going to have to, there's so many aspects, I'm going to have to just synopsize on Tuesday, we, I'm just going to tell you, and then I'll give you a rough idea. There are many sextiles, and the moon sextiles the sun, sextiles a Saturn. Oh, the sun sextiles Saturn. Moon sextiles Mercury. Uh, Gemini, la, la, Venus and Gemini sextiles Aries, Chiron. There's a trine of the moon to Saturn. There is a conjunction of the moon to Mars and Cancer, and a square to... Chiron with the moon and a sextile to Uranus with the moon. So what it is in a general sense, with the exception of Chiron, with Venus Chiron and moon Chiron, which those are fire energies with, uh, you know, the Chiron energy, the rest is water. 
and earth and water and earth focus on the energy of groundedness, money, money systems, bringing in money, finances, economic, what our personal value is to the world and how it translates to money and finance. And also um, Saturn is career. In Pisces, it's going to highlight careers that are more intuitive or more um, emotional based, which could be something more visceral like an artist or um, an intuitive, somebody who reads tarot reading, tarot for a living or photography. So Tuesday with the sextile energy between mostly water and earth is going to help us earn more money, but also feel really grounded in how we express ourselves. Venus and Gemini, a sextile to Chiron may be the exception because Venus in Gemini is air and it's stoking the fire of uh, Aries. And so that's going to be a little bit more about um, a visceral sexual energy associated with Venus and Mars, which rules Aries. Um, yeah, so Tuesday is kind of a mixed bag, but drive and a drive for security, a drive even for pleasure. Wednesday is the moon in Cancer squaring Chiron, squaring Jupiter, trining Neptune, and sextiling Uranus and Taurus before it enters Leo overnight. And so that's going to be a little bit more fire and Uranus is unexpected shifts and changes around finance and security, uh, the vision for beauty, uh, growing things, growing plants, being around agriculture. Uh, you know, what are we doing with our money? Are we getting something more solid? Because Jupiter is moving closer and closer to the energy of Taurus, which May 17th, it goes into Taurus. We are going to start considering whether or not we're going to move. Jupiter is the the planet of movement, but it's also real estate. So we may be considering a move coming up. Thursday, moon is in Leo overnight. Like I said, it's 11.30 p.m. Pacific, 2.30 a.m. Eastern. And it shifts the energy from home and family to more focused on children, creativity, childlike energy coming in. And there's an opposition of Leo to Pluto at 3.13 a.m. So it's really overnight. We may not feel that. Um, early in the morning, there's a square of Mars to Chiron, which is going to be an interesting energy and also potential for aggressive action. Um, Mars in Cancer is home and family. Chiron in Aries is children and tantrums. They're at odds. So the Mars energy is what rules Aries. So there's going to be a, an uncomfortable disconnect feeling between children and their mothers or youth and an older person. And Quincunx between uh, moon and Saturn and Pisces is going to be a real discomfort that that's kind of a, a concerning energy this week because Saturn and Pisces with a quincunx to the moon in Leo is children and then Mars in Cancer is home and family with an Aries, Aries Chiron and because they're connected to that Mars energy that um, energy on Thursday is more concerning for family and children and aggression and potential violence. So I'm just going to give you a heads up on that. Leo squares the sun in Taurus at 5.20 p.m. on Thursday. And Leo and sun in Taurus, it's going to be at odds with someone wants attention. Somebody wants to keep it low key and not be really out in the open with how they feel about things. And Taurus is the slower energy as far as making decisions. So the sun in Taurus is going to be a slow down energy where um, moon in Leo is much more fire based. And so therefore wanting to take action, quick action. Friday, moon is in Leo still. The focus will be on children and a square to Mercury and Taurus. So there is a traditional mindset that is being challenged by the mood of the collective and the mood of those in authority. Um, trying to Chiron at 1.11 p.m., that's a fire energy. So there's going to be some heated emotions coming up on Friday with a square of moon to Uranus and Taurus at 326 PM, a volatile market based on this. And then um, moon sextiles Venus and Gemini on Friday night at 742 PM Eastern. And so moon in Leo is going to be an energy that again, it focuses the attention. It gives drama. 
it gives creativity, a focus on children and play. And Venus and Gemini is cooperative with that in a sextile energy. Finally, on the 29th of April, which is a week from today, Saturday, because I'm seeming to have a difficult time getting out the podcast consistently at the same time every week, but there's a little bit of leeway depending on what other things are in the schedule. So um, I'm going to tell you about Saturday again. Uh, there's a trine between Jupiter and the moon, and that's really positive energy about movement and finding something, maybe selling a property or looking for a new one. Then the moon immediately goes void, of course, until it enters Virgo at 2.59 p.m. Eastern. Moon in Virgo is going to be a work energy, a sincere uh, nose to the grindstone, kind of practical, pragmatic energy. It's also about education and teaching. I know my kids are doing finals in the next couple of weeks. And so you may be focused on your final exams. Mars in Cancer, sextiles Uranus and Taurus. That's a positive energy with new ideas and a potential for an unusual situation coming in. So if you're looking for a home, the action taken, Mars and Cancer could bring an unusual scenario or money from unusual sources. And then finally, uh, Moon in Virgo opposite Saturn in Pisces. And that's going to be a strong energy around career, around owning a storyline and taking responsibility for the true nature and the visceral energy that's coming in psychically. We are trying to understand something on a psychic level and really uh, focusing on that on Saturday. Okay, what I wanted to go over, what I wanted to go over is a little unusual, but it's something fun that we can look at. And that is a chart of Taylor Swift and Andrew Hosier Byrne, otherwise known as Hosier. They are both musicians. They have met in public when Hosier had his hit, Take Me to Church. And if you watch the podcast regularly, you know that I'm a huge fan of Hosier's. And Taylor Swift is someone that I'm a fan of through my daughter, who is also an enormous fan. She saw her in concert in Tampa last week. I think I mentioned that on the podcast before. But it occurred to me that they're roughly the same age. So I know they've met before. What if he was a potential suitor or love interest for Taylor? So I wanted to see how their charts matched up. So her birthday is December 13th, 1989, 8.46 a.m. Eastern, in Reading, Pennsylvania. He was born in Ireland. The time I have is 5.55 a.m. And I'm not sure if I got that accurately or if that's just closer to a sunrise chart, but I'm gonna just roll with it because I know it's fairly close to sunrise for him. But I think it was actually gotten off the web for his birth time. March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, 1990, which makes these two roughly four months apart in age. So I find it really interesting that each of them have a very significant musical career as singers. Both of their music styles are very verbose. Each one of them writes incredibly involved songs, deeply emotional with personal life events. And they both use a lot of words to give a visual meaning to what they're trying to say. So what are the commonalities in their charts? So I may do both versions of Taylor on the inside wheel and then Hosier on the inside wheel so that you can kind of see what they look like. But together, they have a, a large quantity of overlapping planets because the slower moving planets don't go that far in four months. So they have almost the same Neptune and Taylor's chart is Capricorn on the horizon with Neptune at 14 and she, that's Hosier's, Neptune at 11 degrees for her Neptune, and his is at 14. Her Uranus is at four degrees Capricorn in her 12th house. His Uranus is nine degrees. Um, her Mercury is at eight degrees Capricorn, which gives her staying power. Um, that is a very strong career generational energy. So all of the Capricorn energy in her chart, Uranus, Mercury, Neptune and Saturn really talk about staying power, her career will be very long lasting. Um, because she has a Capricorn rising, that gives her height and she is 5'10", so she's fairly tall. Uh, her Saturn is in Capricorn, which means she's very capable of practical work efforts. 
and very well thought out, responsible person. I think she definitely is a control freak when it comes to different areas of her life and, you know, her career. She's got Venus in Aquarius joined with Vesta at eight degrees Aquarius and a North node at 17 Aquarius. Hosier has, again, I haven't really discussed his planets on the same area, in the same area. Uh, Uranus at nine Capricorn, Neptune at 14 Capricorn, which I did say, Saturn at 23 Capricorn. And then he has Mars at four degrees Aquarius and Venus at 10 Aquarius, which actually line up really nicely with her Venus and Vesta in early Aquarius. It means that there is never a lack of things to talk about, never a lack of ideas. Her feminine nature is punctuated by his masculine nature. So he expresses the masculine energy of Aquarius, which is a sexual drive, a unique quality, an unusual look or appearance. And he has long hair and, you know, certain other idiosyncratic features, such as he's six foot four. So, you know, he's got that unusual look, but at the same time, a very lovely appealing look. And she's got Aquarian energy for her Venus, which also gives her a lovely appearance. Uh, Aquarius and the air signs really do imbue people with a very kind of a je ne sais quoi, an unusual, unknowable energy of beauty and clarity. It's a clarifying energy. So they can come across as very angelic looking. Vesta at eight degrees for Taylor is home and hearth. She has an unusual uh, or multiple homes and hearths, and she has many homes. I don't know that Hosier has more than one home. I know he lives in County Wicklow, Ireland as a home base, but he is always on the move, which is a very strong uh, Sagittarian slash Jupiterian energy. Neither one of them have a very strong Sagittarius, although Taylor is a Sagittarian. He's got moon at zero Sag, which is really interesting because his nature associated with home and family and his mother is about travel, but it's also in her house of friendship. So there is a strong connection of being friendly, nurturing energy for her. And then her son is in the 12th house in Sagittarius. So his moon, her son are in the same sign, although they're quite a few degrees apart, 21 degrees apart, but it does give a wonderful overlapping of energy. She has Mars at 26 Scorpio. He has the asteroid Juno, which is marriage and partnership, right on her Mars. So that could be a strong marriage aspect. They both share a 19 degree black moon Lilith, which is a strong energy around sexual independence and the goddess energy, especially in Scorpio. It's a very um, visceral, covert energy around um, attraction. Their Plutos are within one degree of each other in Scorpio, which is a commitment energy. It is a strong, like Libra rules marriage and partnership. And the next house is ruled by Scorpio, which is the house of commitment. And Scorpions need commitment, want commitment, need partnership. And her, both of them share the Juno energy of marriage in Scorpio. Hers is early at eight degrees and his is late at 25. And they both fall in her house of career. So they would share a strong career connection and especially uh, making even more money if they decided to do a duet, which I'm really hoping for, honestly. And um, going to the other side of the chart, the marriage area of their charts is Chiron on the horizon of, or the descendant. And Chiron in Cancer means the wounding was around mom or some type of energy associated with mother. We know Taylor's mom has had cancer. She's very close with her. And there may be a deep emotional wounding around that energy. His mother, I'm not totally sure about, but she is an artist. And so he has a strong connection to the creative energy of an artist for nurturing and mothers. And I know his whole family, he has said, are artists. And so there's this really strong connection to having nurturing around the arts and nurturing around uh, domesticity. Taylor's Jupiter is in cancer in her house of work. So she does best working from home. His Jupiter is in cancer also within six degrees. So they share a love of travel, but also a love of home and being at home away from home and traveling in the work environment. 
her moon's at three degrees Cancer, and that's right on his Jupiter. So there's an expansion for him expanding and connecting to that travel energy and the home energy and the feeling like this is a familiar energy with her of mother. And then they both share Cirrus in late degrees of Gemini, which is diet and views on how they eat. Both have a palace Athena in her house of communication and hers is in Pisces late degree, which means she's very sentimental, very easily able to understand the very clear imagination um, of an artist. And his is in Aries late degree, almost to Taurus. And that can really make him uh, more highly sexualized around the feminine energy, which a lot of his songs are about the act of making love. And, you know, you listen to him more deeply, even Take Me to Church is about that. And then he's a Pisces son, which falls in her house of romance and coupling up. He's got Mercury and Pisces late degree. Both his son and Mercury and Vesta are in conjunct, conjunct mode to her palace Athena, which is a good energy for connecting in marriage or having a love relationship. So all in all, and the final thing is the South Node in Leo at within two degrees at the last degrees of her house of marriage and partnership. And so that's a past life connection in love and with children and creativity. So their charts are very strongly linked in what they do for a living, in the kind of lives they lead. I would say, yes, their lives are both very busy, but they understand each other. And I know that she had some of the energy coming out, the information coming out for her breakup with her last boyfriend was that they just had different personalities and he was more interested in not being famous or not having a traditional fame energy, even though he's an actor, um, he isn't that interested in being famous or having the fame. And she is, she can't cut off from that. While Hosier also is rather cut off um, from fame by holing up in Ireland, he is getting more used to that energy because that's what his career is based on. He has to have that. And I think he's probably more comfortable with a small audience than she is. Um, well, she probably would be fine with a small audience too, any kind of audience, honestly, with that Leo South node. And he likes the attention. Don't let his shyness fool you. There is definitely a drive in him to have connectivity to the masses with that Aquarius energy in his chart. But um, the other thing that I thought about in this particular connection is one of her songs talking about um, having a pebble that they found in Wicklow. And I know that she's met Hosier a few times socially at parties, celebrity parties and things. But I know she's also been to Wicklow with Joe, her ex-boyfriend, and was talking about the pebble in his pocket from Wicklow. So I find it really interesting, like of all the places in Ireland she would mention, she mentioned the place that Hosier actually lives. So my fangirl inner voice says there's a very strong potential for a connection between these two. It's a little bit unusual, but, you know, her Venus and his Mars enjoy unusual and eccentric. And I just think that they are basically birds of a feather and they both have a similar career path. So anyway, that's just a fun little uh, relationship synastry for you. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Please do like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you can do. It helps me, helps the algorithm. Last week, um, for some reason, when I uploaded my upload link found an old account that I had, even though that was not what I normally sign in with. And so I was uploading to an old account I didn't realize I had. And my podcast has been up for a week. It just was in a different location that didn't go out to the masses. Unfortunately, I have corrected that it is up. And I will say it is worth a listen because it's the Mercury retrograde, which will last. It has significant range. It has a long term effect because of the solar eclipse associated with it. So please do give that a listen as well. And thank you for coming and spending your time with me. I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you again next week. Take care.
slam I was like, bam, jump on stage and then I didn't dance Hi, this is Shelley. Thank you for joining us this week. To contact me for a private reading, go to angeliczodiac.com under the readings tab. To purchase my ebook, Learn Astrology, you can find it at angeliczodiac.com. Background music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Be sure to check back next week and subscribe through iTunes at Astro Energy Astrology Show.